speaking to the question of whether you should use targeted therapies or broader uh, agents with broader anti-leukemic specificity, uh, of course, is actually what do we know about the biology of disease relapse? Well, there's some emerging data. Firstly, we're now getting better at identifying risk factors for early relapse. So patients with a FLT3 mutation have a much higher risk of early than late relapse. There are a number of transplant factors that seem to protect against early relapse, particularly the choice of an un use of an unrelated donor. And secondly, next generation sequencing data, which shows that quite commonly at relapse, there's loss of mutations, putative driver mutations that were present at diagnosis. And again, that steers you a little bit more towards using as a maintenance strategy drugs with a broader anti-leukemic specificity. Uh, and then finally, I think in this setting of maintenance, we need to be thoughtful about the use of donor lymphocytes. The challenge with AML is if it relapses, it relapses quickly, and to get DLI in the first six months post-transplant is challenging, certainly at a meaningful dose. And also there's emerging interest now, of course, about using CAR T cells post-transplant, and that's uh, an area I'm sure there's going to be a lot of research in. So, so, so broadly, there's a number of options. There's very little randomized data uh, to inform our practice, and what is vital and encouraging to see now is the growth of prospective randomized trials answering uh, many of these pivotal questions, without which we're unlikely to be able to significantly improve the outcomes after an allograft, uh, but with which uh, I think we're going to firstly have a better understanding about the biology of relapse because prospective trials drive collection of high quality biological material. And secondly, there's every reason to believe that there are strategies out there that are gonna have the potential to improve outcome.